Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Rotary's Magazine. My name is Kenny McKee. If you don't know what this channel is, we're all about Rotary content. This video isn't Rotary related. I'm trying to get more people to come on board. So um, this can be more general, but I want to bring up the five most annoying types of car enthusiasts that are ruining car culture. And I made a video called the five types of car enthusiasts ruining car culture. But this video is kind of a sequel, but I figured that I'd make this one to kind of address some points in the last one and then bring up some new ones. So let's get started. Number one, the most annoying type of car enthusiast is the snowflake. And if you watched the last video and if you read any of the comments in the last video, I think you'll see a whole bunch of these people in there. And what I mean by snowflake are the people that will go out of their way to justify something that is just incorrect in every single way. For instance, I brought up the fact that um, people supporting eBay companies, like fake, not eBay companies, but counterfeit companies, um, are ruining car culture. They're ruining companies that are going out there and making new products and everything because there's no reason to actually make new and innovative products if people are just going to rip them off, copy them, and resell them as their own or rename them or use their brand and do things like that. And a lot of people didn't get that point or people that did get that point still went on to say, well, it doesn't matter if it's cheaper, if that's all you can afford. Whenever the answer to not being able to afford something is simply work harder and get a better job, people are trying to make excuses for people that can't afford parts. And those are snowflakes. Snowflakes are ruining car culture. Another type of snowflake, obviously, that a lot of you see on the internet as well is the uh, people that post the respect all builds memes. And like I said earlier, respecting all builds isn't a thing. It shouldn't be a thing. And a lot of people also misconstrued the idea that builds that are done properly and done correctly are worthy of more respect than builds that are half ass all the way. And that is, I will once again double down on that fact. If you do a build correctly, if you take your time and do it correctly, it's worthy of way more respect than a build that's half-assed and done shitty. So think about it for one second. If you do a build correctly, it should be respected more. I don't know why that's even a point of contention. It shouldn't be argued. Um, you should 100% take your time doing it the right way, then doing it wrong, and then redoing it the right way over time. I don't know why that's a difficult concept people to wrap your head around. Because there's nothing, there's nothing that's... Um, you can't look down on someone for taking longer to build their car. Now, there is a point I'm going to bring up later that you may say it's contradictory, but I'll address that later. Um, but the snowflakes are the people that apologize. They're apologists for people that are ruining car culture. So if you're one of the people that defended someone that I brought up in my last video, five types of car that just ruining car culture, you fall under number one, and you should fix that. Number two, this one's a fun one, and I fall under this one sometimes too, is the one-upper. The person that always has something better to say than your build. So if you bring up your car and say, hey, I have my RX-7 that has a 60 to 1 turbocharger, and then someone goes, why didn't you put a Precision 66 on it? Or a Borg Warning FR-73, whatever, blah, 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 8374. Why didn't you do this? And it's just like the people that, when you say something, and they're, they always have something better, no matter what. You say, well, I have a 2004 Super SCI. Well, my uncle has an LS1 Camaro that'll beat that ass. Or, hey, I drive this RX-7. That car is cool, but, you know, my cousin's uncle's brother's sister's dog's mother's uncle's brother's father's daughter has a, a 500-horsepower ZR1 Corvette that will destroy that. It's like, all right, cool. I don't care, but... Why do you have to tell me that? And it, it doesn't, it really means nothing. We're talking about whatever he, this is here and from there. So the one upper is super annoying and it's multiple aspects. Like I said, it's it's people that say, why don't you have this part? Or it's people that say, um, well, I, have, I know this. Or like, I have this that's better than you. Or I, you have this that's better than you. It's not a competition. Car building is, I mean, outside of actual racing where it is a competition, building your street car, which a majority of you guys are, um, it doesn't matter. I don't know why people make it a competition. If you're a street race, you're competitive, like that's different. Like you want to race people, that's cool. But like if it's purely just driving a car, there's no reason to to try to one up another person. It doesn't make any sense. And that's another annoying person. And now number three, the third most annoying person to me is the internet racer. The person that goes on the internet, reads zero to 60 times, watches quarter mile videos, and does all this stuff and goes, this car did this a Motor Trend Magazine, 0to60.com says this, that means that this WRX that makes 300 horsepower is going to be faster than this RX-7 that makes 250 horsepower without taking into account anything else. They literally read numbers and then go from there. And like, it's not even like their car they're racing. It's not even whatever, or like, even if it is their car, they're like, well, my car, like for instance, um, I have an Acura TL, and my Acura TL says that it goes 14.2 on the quarter mile, so that means that I'm going to run a 14.2 while disregarding the fact that a professional driver drove the car, and it's not you driving the car, and then does not make your car a 14.2 second car until you drive it that fast or that slow. Um, people that use the internet to, to prove how fast their car is versus actually racing to put it on the track and going from there, or actually racing other cars and using videos to figure out who's faster and what, that's the most annoying type of person to me, number three, internet racer. Number four, 
the perpetual builder, the person that is always building their car no matter what. Like for instance, like my car makes 600 horsepower. Is it done yet? No, it doesn't even run. It's like, how do you know? Like, and then it turns this whole thing where it's like, my, my car is going to be fast. It's going to be this, it's going to be this. And you just sit there and go, are you going to prove it? Are you not going to prove it? And like, well, no, bro, my car is totally faster than yours. It's going to whatever. It's like, but you haven't done it. And then for some reason, that build goes from in 2015, I'm going to kill the game in 2016. It gets 2016. I'm going to kill the game in 2017. It's 2017. I'm going to kill the game in 2018. And the car hasn't made any progress. The perpetual builder. <laughs> it just, it's hilarious. And then the best part is that after like a year and a half of them saying they're going to kill the game, the car gets parted out. And that's where it goes. It goes away forever. And then they go on to the next car and say they're going to do the same thing. And then that car gets parted out. And all they do is they just part out cars over time. The perpetual builder, number four. The worst one, and I'm the very last one that I'm going to bring up, is number five. And this is the absolute worst one to me. And I know I've said that multiple times. So this is the worst one to me. It's the asshole. The person like Aaron DeAngelis on the RX-7 Club that asks you a question, you give them an answer. And then either they can test what you've said, even though it's true, or they take your advice and then do the complete opposite. These are the most annoying people. It's like, okay, to go back to the other video, a lot of people were saying, well, you know what? Not everyone knows everything you know, blah, blah. You, I forgot that everyone starts out this way. It's like, well, there are the people that this, people like this are the reason why people aren't willing to help people out anymore. And it's because I can give you advice and say, hey, you shouldn't buy an eBay turbocharger because you're not going to, there's not going to be the quality there. You're going to run into reliability issues, things like that. There's a reason why the quality, the quality assurance is not there. I would not recommend it. And they go, okay, cool. And then they go out and do it anyway. And you're just like, then they wonder why that car explodes. And you're just like, I told you why you shouldn't do this. And you did it anyway. I'm not even going to help you anymore. So nowadays it turns into this whole thing where people want to ask questions. It's not even ask a question to ask a question anymore. It's or not even ask a question to gain knowledge. It's to ask a question simply to ask the question. And it's, it's so stupid. So for me, when someone asks me a question, I need the question to be researched or at least show that you get put in a smidgen bit of effort to ask something before you've done it. Because if you come in and say, hey, how do I turbocharge my car? I'm not going to fucking answer anymore. I'm done. Because people have asked millions and millions of times, hey, why does my car do this? Why does my car do that? And I'll say one thing and then they go, they do another thing and then it's completely wrong. And then it comes back to what I've said and it's correct. So the asshole, I mean, there's more, more to the asshole than what I've said, but I don't want to make this video too long. I've talked really, really fast. I'm sorry, but I want to get all these points out within, within a time limit. Um, but I think those are the five. So let's recap. Number one, the snowflake. Don't fucking be butthurt about stupid shit on the internet. Number two, the one uppers. People that try to prove that they're better than you no matter what. Number three, the internet racers. Racing with random facts off the internet. Number four, the perpetual builder. Your car is never going to be done. Just fucking give up on cars. Number five, the asshole. If you're going to ask a question, you better fucking follow through. Um, if you like these points, if you disagree with these points, leave it in the comments down below. Be sure to leave a like. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, we have tons of rotary car stuff. This is not a rotary video, obviously. But um, we have a lot of RX-7s and cool stuff going on. I just picked up you know, his cause. My buddy's building a sturdy rotor. And we're doing a whole bunch of cool stuff. So be sure to comment. Be sure to subscribe. If you like this video, see you guys in the next one.